In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. In the waters of baptism, Samuel and Job died with Christ and rose with Christ in glory. May Sam now share in the gift of God's life forever and eternity. Amen. Amen. Every year from hammers and stockings, 
to toolkits, to vacuum cleaners. There were always five, and they always served some future need that we would have. For many years in our childhood, we shared every Christmas with the Capri family, coming together to sing and suck. He knew the importance of friendship and community. I believe he wanted everyone to feel joy, often from the simplest of things. He designed and built himself the basement record for our friends to come over and hang out in. Yes, I'm sure there's silicone and duct tape under that faux 70s wood paneling. He would host tailgaters at Notre Dame for us and our friends. The big brown van was easy to find with a giant self-designed inflatable golden dome that perched the top. Ask any of us to tell you that story. Everyone felt welcome. After seeing the family community spurred on by his sister Anne's backyard pool, he built one, stating if you build it, they will come, and we did. Ten grandchildren would gather to play and play, and we feasted on Sue's amazing cooking and then played poker in the gazebo in the woods. We all felt welcome. We would trek to Sanibel Island in the spring for many years, enjoying each other in the sun and the sand. There we bonded with our growing families. There was a special tree that all the grandkids went to, and they played and played there. Lots of laughter and singing, and his discovery of xylophone music, laissez les bon temps rouler. He taught us to be true to ourselves and to make our own fun. We knew to dance like no one's watching, and to think and live outside the box. He took us to baseball games, orchestra concerts, plays, and even light opera. In the early years, Michael moped, but he grew to be appreciative of those experiences, and I'm sure that it influences him to this day in his work. Over the years, Dad would listen to Rachel sing, and he would find God's love and glory in her voice. When able, Dad would throw money into our pockets. Five or ten cents at Bond Drug went a long way in those days. If friends were with us, he would give them the dime to buy a piece of candy. As we got older, he would tell us to go grab some money from his billfold. My youngest brother, John, always working to take care of others, was the only one who routinely put money back in his wallet. <laughs> he put us all through college and some through graduate school. He gave and gave, and we all knew that we were loved. He would wake up at insane hours to head into work and help the many people who were struggling with mental illness. We need more compassionate physicians in this world. We need more helpers like my dad. We need people who knew that everyone deserves help. Everyone is worthy. Everyone should be treated with dignity and respect. We need more who believe in peace, mercy, justice, and compassion. I never had self-doubt when I was with my dad because he always believed in me. I could always see the twinkle in his eyes when he looked at me, my husband, and my children with a smile and a loving wink that he knew we were doing the best that we could. He was so very proud of all of us. He found such great joy in his children and his ten grandchildren. He loved you all very much. I know the Scalish kids felt that he was like a second father to them. They were so lucky to have lived so close. Nothing was more important to dad than family. He was a family man through and through. He was so grateful to his wife, Sue, and for all that she did for all of us. In my mom's words, they were a great team. They supported each other in so many ways. Sue was supported as she worked for fair housing in Cleveland Heights in the 70s and later classes to take her beyond her nursing degree and into and through law school. During that time, Dad wrote, wrote a curriculum vitae that we found while going through his memorabilia. And it closed with the following quote. He and his wife Sue had five children, poorly timed such that they lived with four teenagers during a two-year period in their home in Cleveland Heights, <laughs> which was worse than seasickness. <laughs> Little things gave him joy, bacon for breakfast, marshmallow-filled pinwheels, pastry, donuts, face it, he loved anything sweet, and Sue's cooking. Wow, in her words, he loved anything she put before him. And man, did she cook and cook. Amazing love through food. In Dad's words, good goobies. <laughs> he 
He loved his Catholicism and he loved the Mass. He planned this funeral Mass. Thank you, Rachel, for paring it down from the 35 pages. <laughs> On the first page, he entreats us all, sing, and in all caps, use your voice regardless. Music vibrates the soul, let me hear your voice, the tones of the soul never end. So please sing at the top of your voices today. We hope you will join us today for the ceremony at the gravesite, where you will see a plot that he and Sue chose with a place for the entire family. They designed a gorgeous headstone model for the one his father erected in Kansas City. Taking care of his family was his chief goal in life. The joy his family brought him is exemplified in the letter he wrote to all of us two days after my wedding. October 12, 1987, dear kids, these are times when you get a glimpse of heaven and a very brief, brief feeling of God's presence. This weekend was one of those times, everybody praying, everybody singing, everybody dancing. And God will ask me on the day of judgment, as the rabbi says, did you dance? And thanks to you all, I will say, yes indeed, Lord. God will then say, come on in, I have got some music for you. He went on, thank you to you all. Rachel, Kiernan, Steve, Chris, Mike, Mark, Sam, John, Sue, Nancy, Leon, Charlie, and all the others who were there. I will be able to say I have been here before. He went on, I close as usual, be safe, study hard, work vigorously for peace, love gently, truths shall set you free, persist in what is good, fight fair, Forget frequently, love to you all. Bubba Dad got the same. My dad taught us about forgiveness, always stating, fight fair, forget fast. This was one of many Sam truisms. He always wanted to impart his wisdom to us. We could all repeat his phrases ad nauseum. Shut your mouth and breathe through your nose. <laughs> Keep crawling. Class sophistication and dignity. Truth, oneness, good, and beauty. Baby on the floor, <laughs> hit the hazards, clutch, clutch. We are off like a herd of turtles. I made myself in the basement. Someone's going to be crying in a minute. <laughs> Always keep both feet firmly planted in midair. And over the last few years, elbows to everyone. Growing up, every night at bedtime, pleasant dreams. God bless you. See you in the morning. I loved my dad. Not only did he love us all unconditionally, he really loved the world and the beauty of it. He worked hard to combat the ugliness and injustices. His legacy is in the many that he helped over the years. His legacy is in the inspiration that his passion for working for justice gives others. His legacy is in his family that will carry on the values that he instilled in us. If we can all be driven by love, with a fraction of Sam Niagara's passion, the world will be a better place. He made the world a better place. Let's all be part of his legacy. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant Sam also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first prayer.
and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before others indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faith of others shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there are not, but I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christian, thank you very much. Your words were very nice. And they were very heartfelt to know how much you all of your dad very much. And I know how hard this is for you, uh, Sue. And yet we come here because what drives us here today is our faith. Uh, you know Sam in ways that I don't know Sam. And I know Sam in ways you don't know Sam. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Sam and I had very interesting discussions along the way. And some of them he went away not happy with me, and some of them he walked. And that's all right. Because I want you to remember something. We are not here because this is about Sam only. It is about what he believed in. It really he was very strong in his, his opinion and very strong in what he believed. Very rarely in life do you come across people who do not are like that. And I'm very serious about that. Now, was he always right? Probably not. <laughs> But that's all right. Because what guided Sam in his life was his true belief in Jesus Christ. A belief that he knew really what you picked for the gospel today is true. That I am the way and the truth and the life. And that's what I'm going to guide my life. So we come here today, and you want to share lots of stories about him. It's an important thing to do as people. But maybe what you want to share most of this about him is his, his faith that in the end, God will do what God does and God will provide for him. So often when we come to celebrate and commend someone to the Lord, we think it's all about him or her. It's really about us. It's really about what we believe. So you have a, an example of a man who truly believed, who tried to live that, who worshipped your in his good day every day. It wasn't so big a show, but he truly believed that. And he, when he would talk to people and argue with them and remind them of who they were, sometimes people would walk away not happy. But that's all right. He was still being true to who he is. His faith was everything in his life. After a suit, that's it. Truthfully, he knew what it meant to be false. He knew what it meant to be faithful. He knew what it meant to make mistakes in life. He knew that a God, a God who cared for him deeply. So you and I are challenged today about our faith. Sometimes our faith is not real strong, and sometimes it is strong. But you are here because Jesus Christ died for us. We're in the midst of the Easter season. We celebrate the very core of what we believe, the very core of who we are. The sad thing in our world is that that is not always the job, because we tend to Sam would never water down what you believe. Nor should we. So we gathered here in this church where he worshiped for years to remember what God has done for him and prayerfully what God will do for him. That God would grant him a place at that heavenly table.
where you and I hopefully someday will gather through. Having lived lives of faithfulness and being true to who we are and what we say we believe. That in a world that looks for guidance, our faith may truly guide us. So be thankful for your faith, my friends. Be thankful for who we are. But when you leave here today, this is not about standing in the past. Take some of his beliefs and his desires and what he truly saw as important to make them a part of your life. Be true to who you are. May God grant you him in front of us.
sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands to the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Sam may be taken up in glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For Christ is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the hope of angels adore your glory, adore your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices be pray joined with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Who give us apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, a 
whose constant intercession in your presence we rely to and pray to God. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Paul, in Edward our Bishop, the order of Bishop Paul, the clergy, in the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who you have suffered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Samuel, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in the resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who die and transform their holy body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and all who are pleasing to you in, in, in passing through this life, give kindly to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seek to our God as you are, we shall become like you through all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
Grant me, pray, O oh Lord, that your servant Sam, with whom we have celebrated his Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of life and peace. Through Christ our Lord. We have prayed for Sam this day and asked that God would receive him into peace. We now commend him to the Lord. We ask that God may receive him, and that he would may share the everlasting gift of God's promise of the resurrection. We pray also for his family and for those of you who gather us, us today, that your faith may be your strength and your consolation. So let us now pray for Sam. Let us ask God to receive him. Let us now take Sam to his 